Hey, how's it going? Today I want to go over a really simple low profile intruder pattern. It's only a single station, so it will have a nice profile, but it doesn't have a lot of materials, um, not a lot of bulk. So starting my vise here, I've got a partridge Waddington shank. It's a 35 millimeter. Um, and I'm starting off with uh, 140 denier black. So I'm gonna lay down my base on my shank here. And then for my stinger hook, I'm going to use a partridge intruder size four. This is the Z4 intruder hook. Um, and for my stinger line, I'm gonna use fire line 14 pound doubled up. And as you go to do your stinger, this is a slightly eye up octopus style hook. You wanna feed your line, your loop, so they go into the top of the eye right here. It's when they pull, they're straight. You'll see sometimes that people put it into the top, they'll go to the side and just make it so it doesn't line up straight. So here you go. You can see there's that nice straight pull. And I'm only gonna set this off maybe the length of the hook shank off the back of the Waddington. I'm not going super deep on this one because it is only a single station and I'm not fishing the hook that deep. I'm not using massive lead eyes on this one, but I am using some lead dumbbell eyes. And I put these as far to the front, right on the edge of this upturned eye. And I want to drop a loop. I'm going to do my first dubbing, dubbing loop here in the back. And for this rear loop, I'm going to be using UV ice dub. Uh, this is the fluorescent pink. And it's a good mix of color, but then it also has this UV material that's mixed in too, so it gets those nice long fibers. Um, as you're picking out ice dub, you want to make sure you get the ones that have there's the different colors that are different materials. So these ones have nice long fibers and I'm just pulling them apart and restacking them to kind of get them all lengthened out. I drop it into my loop. And with my spinner here, and I'm not gonna pick this out because I wanna leave it kind of big and fluffy here. So I'm gonna go all the way back to where I tied in my stinger and I'm gonna, as I go through, I'm stroking the fibers back, but I'm not overlapping my wraps just like Palmer in a hackle. And so it works as a nice kind of target, nice bright spot, also keeps that hook protected from materials falling down inside. So next I'm gonna advance my thread all the way back up to my eye. And I'm gonna use some Mirage Opal Tinsel in a size large. And I'm gonna rip off a pretty good size piece of this because I'm gonna go down the shank and then back up. To do this too, it's also when we start to use some crazy glue. Um, Gluing to reinforce that sting attachment, but also it's gonna hold that tinsel in place in case there is a spot where it gets chipped up. So I'm gonna hit the eyes. Now for the shoulder of this, I'm gonna use some blue Arctic Fox. Uh, this stuff, you wanna, there, there's a mix of different sizes. You wanna find some fibers that are just gonna be just about as long as the shank. So I'll cut off a nice little section of that. Now to clean up Arctic Fox, there's a lot of these nice long guard hairs. There's all this under fur. What I want to do is I want to kind of pinch up to the length of the fur. I know I want all of my hair to be at least that long. So then I just kind of go and I just start pulling these pieces out. I'm going to go ahead and just place all this in. And again, as I'm starting to place it in the loop, I want to see the length of my fibers. I want it to hit just at about over that pink. So I'm kind of spacing them out there. I'll run them up and down so I get some length, get some separation. And to pick out this, I'm not gonna brush it because I want this to stay pretty full, so I'm just gonna take a bodkin and I'm gonna run it up this when I've kind of created the stem and just start to loosen up the pieces that are trapped in there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and wrap. The cool thing about this dub and loop spinner, it's one of these ones from Loon. It's got a nice big hole in it. You can put your finger on so you can rotate around. It's got weight, you can also hold onto the outside edge here. So it's just nice that you're big and heavy. Let's hold it into place, not gonna spin off. Um, really strong, helps you keep these loops in place. So I'm not being super particular with this loop. I just wanna make sure that it folds back as I go and wrap forward. Um, I want it to stay bushy. I didn't use a toothbrush on it because I want it to stay pretty full. This is my main shoulder here. So not overlapping, but brushing back each time I go.
Next, I'm going to take some ostrich, and this is kind of blue that matches up there. And I'm going to look again for fibers that are just long enough. One thing I like is a trick for putting these ostrich fibers. As you can see, that I've got them all stacked here in my hand at different lengths. I start to pull back. I just leave them here, and for every wrap I go, I just catch two or three of them. So then after one time through, I'll make sure everything's pulled back nice and tight, and I'll just secure down, and then I'll kind of see where I feel like there's missing sections out of here. So I'm pretty full. It looked like I got kind of a, missing some coverage right there. So I've got about four strands left. Just a few strands of black, not as long as the blue. I'm gonna put these right on the top. So there's probably only about six total. I just put those right on the roof. Next, I'm going to use some blue flashaboo. I'm going to use this pretty sparingly, only about four strands total. And I can trim those back when I'm done to fit. For a collar, I'm going to use a nice piece of fine black marabou. So I'm going to find a nice piece right here. It's got nice quills on it. Before I'm left with just a nice thin stem. Put everything back and just leave the tip there. So I'm going to tie them by the tip on the top of my fly here. And then I'm going to fold that top back over too just so it sticks. And then I'm going to trim it out. And then I'm just going to palmer this, wet my fingers, keep this back, and just palmer this forward. And here your fly's done. And you'll see a lot of flies that are tied like this and kind of leave these eyes all big and exposed. I like to throw just a little bit more around the eyes. And what I'll use for that is some pseudo seal. Um, just a really long fiber synthetic dubbing. What that'll do is I just go real loose with it on the, on the thread here. And you start to wrap in the first fibers and you can kind of twist it all up and make a nice piece. But then I like to figure out the eyes just to give it a little bit of extra coverage. Quick whip finish. And then one more shot of glue just right on that whip finish just to make sure as it's bouncing off the rocks or it gets hit around that you don't come loose. Thanks for watching, I really appreciate it. If you like this video, click like down below, subscribe to my channel, or check out some of these other videos I've done. There's a mix of fly tying, some gear videos, some other intruder videos. Thanks for watching.